Hi everyone, it's Dr. Crad, and today I wanted to share an interesting case with you. As you can see, this patient has no lens, no capsule or zonules. His vision is counting fingers only. I'm going to show you how we fix this situation, although we do encounter a significant obstacle along the way. So how did the patient end up like this? This patient has a history of trauma. He presented with vitreous in the anterior chamber, a cataract with significant phacodonesis, all from the lack of zonules. Fortunately, during his initial cataract surgery, the cataract was removed completely without any dropped fragments. Anterior vitrectomy was performed, but the capsular bag could not be saved. So here we are attempting to install a lens implant for this patient. We will be performing the Yamani technique with the Kim modification. So after drying the ocular surface with a Wexel sponge, we're marking the limbus two and a half millimeters back and then two millimeters tangential to it. And we do this 180 degrees away. It's very important to place these marks in a precise manner because this is where the needle passes will go as the haptics or the arms from the lens implant will be passed through here. So I'm drying the conjunctiva and then I'm gonna use ink to mark the indentations that I made with the caliper. And so I'm just gonna double check that it's 180 degrees away from each other and it looks straight. However, keep in mind the conjunctiva can move and so this is gonna be evident later on in the case. Here I'm making a paracentesis to place an anterior chamber maintainer. I'm injecting some viscoelastic to protect the corneal endothelium and then creating a second paracentesis to give me a different angle of access into the eye. So next I place the anterior chamber maintainer and I'm taping it into position. But then when I turn it on, I notice that there is a problem with the infusion. I attribute this to some air in the line and I decide to perform anterior vitrectomy thinking that as it's aspirating, the air in the line will be cleared and we would have no problem. I generally prefer a 23 gauge AC maintainer, but at the ASC I was at, they just had this 25 gauge. So during anterior vitrectomy, clearly the infusion line is not working. There is collapse of the anterior chamber. I turn up the infusion as high as the machine will go and I still cannot form the AC. So I'm going to perform bimanual anterior vitrectomy using a different irrigation cannula. And then I'll test out this AC maintainer and try to figure out what's wrong. So I remove the AC maintainer, make sure there are no kinks in the line. And despite turning up infusion all the way, despite even putting on a syringe of BSS on and forcefully flushing it out, I can't get the BSS to flow more than a trickle. An AC maintainer is critical for this type of case. And without a backup AC maintainer to use, I decide to use the irrigation cannula from the bimanual vitrectomy set. And this is not serrated, so it's going to slide out unexpectedly during the case but there's excellent infusion pressure and this will allow me to proceed given what I have. Shortly thereafter, the patient starts to squeeze his eye causing a Bell's reflex and I have difficulty maintaining the eye in primary position. After wrestling with it a little bit, the infusion line slides out. So here's where I get a little bit inventive and I kink the line to try to hold the eye in primary position. The eye pressure is appropriate as there is good infusion through this irrigation cannula. I'm expecting this to slide out at some point, but at least it's helping me maintain the eye in primary position as the patient has a strong Bell's reflex. Another option in hindsight would be to make a very small paracentesis, maybe like a half millimeter, and the irrigation cannula will fit more snugly. Next, I will insert the lens implant into the eye. I'm externalizing the leading haptic into a 25 gauge needle. This is the Kim modification of the Yamani technique. I like this technique a lot as we thread the trailing haptic first while the leading haptic rests safely outside the eye. So here I have a 30 gauge thin walled needle, which I'm gonna tunnel two millimeters through the sclera before turning in. 
and there my makeshift AC maintainer slides out. But fortunately, we're already tunneled in. I'll attempt to reseat that AC maintainer into the paracentesis, but it slides right back out. So now I'm just gonna focus on threading this trailing haptic into the 30 gauge thin walled needle. And fortunately, I'm able to thread it in fairly easily. When the angle of approach is not appropriate, you'll get a little kink in the haptic. So you wanna try to make sure it's aligned very well with the needle. You shouldn't have to force the haptic into the needle. It should glide in fairly easily. Next, I will remove the syringe from this needle. I'm going to reinflate the AC with some viscoelastic. And then I'm going to retire my makeshift AC maintainer. A moment of silence, please. And I put back the first AC maintainer. Uh, we're almost done with the surgery, so I might not even need it, but I figure a little trickle is better than nothing. As I'm getting ready to thread the other needle, I notice a big problem. Do you see what I see? Stop, do not use those marks. The conjunctiva has moved. One very important pearl for the Yamani technique is to double check your marks prior to inserting the second needle. And I noticed to center it, I gotta go another millimeter and a half counterclockwise to my original marks. The IOL will center based on where you enter the sclera, not the conjunctiva. And so you need to look at where you enter the sclera on one side and make sure you're entering the sclera 180 degrees apart on the other side. So here I rest the tip of the haptic on the bevel of the needle, flatten it out, and then insert it straight into the needle. And it goes in fairly easily. And as I withdraw the needle, I'm ready to grab the haptic with the forceps and feed it back into the eye because I don't wanna exert too much force pulling on the haptic optic junction. And then I'm going to cauterize the tip to make a little bulb on this haptic. This is a low temp cautery. I think I prefer the higher temp. I just like to see that it's red and that it's on. You can let it go and then focus your attention on the other haptic. And as you pull out the needle, push the haptic back into the eye. You just need a little bit of the haptic exposed. So I'm just pushing it back into the eye. I wanna exert minimal force on the haptic optic junction. Then you're gonna cauterize the tip of this just to create a little bulb. And at this point, the lens is secure. I wanna bring the eye in primary position just to check centration. If the IOL is centered at this point, you expect the length of the exposed haptic to be equal on each side, which it is. And the haptics are laying fairly flat, which means you have a decent tunnel. And so next, we're just going to bury these haptics into the sclera. The length of the exposed haptics are symmetrical on both sides, so the lens centration should remain stable as the haptics are fed back into the sclera. After the bulbs are buried into the sclera, we're going to remove the AC maintainer, use the bimanual anterior vitrectomy system to both make sure there's no vitreous and to remove the viscoelastic in the eye. Then we seal the incisions. We make sure the eye pressure is appropriate and that the incisions are sealed and watertight. Fortunately, this lens implant looks beautifully centered. Let's take a look at him a week post-op. Taking a look at the inferior haptic, it looks well buried. He's healing beautifully. Next, we'll look at the superior haptic bulb and that also looks buried well. The lens looks very well centered. The patient was thrilled with his vision. To our delight, with our efforts and a little bit of luck, thank God, the patient was seeing 2020 without glasses in that eye. So thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.